You are a very busy man to get a hold of. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah, it's quite busy. It's a Friday, so yeah. last day of the week for some. So it gets a little bit hectic. Yeah. It gets hectic sometimes. I can imagine. Oh, thank you for having this uh, small interview uh, with my YouTube channel. Members would like to watch. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me as well. Yeah. <laughs> No, you are welcome. So first of all, let's let's start by congratulating you with the new GM position manager. How does it feel to be the new GM of Park in by Radisson? Uh, it feels great. It feels great. Thank you, by the way. It feels uh, feels great. It's a, it's an achievement uh, for um, a, a, a hotelier of of um, you know uh, the experience that are, the years of experience that I have. Yeah. It's an, it's an aspiration that you have, you know, uh, at a young age or when you're starting up. I had an aspiration to one day become a GM and it happened at one hotel, small but nice, and then it happens here at a much bigger property, which is, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dream mm -hmm. uh, fulfilled, not the whole dream, but yeah. part of it, so it's part of it. Yeah. Well, it's good to hear that uh, dreams do come true. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do come true. So yeah, let's start about just uh, your youth, you know, like, yeah, who is, um, how was Emil back in the day when you were like, uh, how was it growing up basically? I mean, um, I grew up in this city, I grew up here in Kigali, um, went to high school here, mm -hmm. like everybody else. Yeah. I didn't grow up in a fancy neighborhood or fancy household, it was just decent yeah. and nice. How many siblings did you have? Um, three. So three, yes. And where are you in the ranking order? And I'm the oldest. I'm You're the, the oldest. oldest. Ah, okay. I'm the so oldest. You're leading by example. <laughs> yeah. So I grew up like any other kid uh, yeah. with uh, a decent, uh, I guess, a family or up upbringing. Um, very strict mom. So um, I went to school. Very good school. Not expensive school, but good school. Which which school was this for the I went to a people? Seminary. Uh, seminary um, in in uh, Eastern Province. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was my high school. Uh, more, I mean, the, the foundation of pretty much of who I am uh, professionally or work ethic uh, wise, uh, it comes from there and also from home. Yeah. Interesting. So, how was it back in the days growing up in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Chigali? Like, how was Chigali? For my, many of my viewers are like my age, you don't have many memories of our youth. In Chigali, and how was it back then? I mean, I mean, it's uh, it's um, it's, it's like every other um, youth years of of, of a person. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You don't have any care. You know, you don't you don't know what life is holding for you. Mm -hmm. You just live life uh, to the fullest on a, you know within the means that you have yeah. or your family has. Um, um, well, for us, it would maybe a little bit uh, tougher because uh, after the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994, I was, what, 12, 13? So it wasn't the easiest period of anyone in the country to live in. But uh, we, we lived. Uh, we managed with what we had and survived and started building our lives. You know, the whole society built, it, um, you know, built itself up. And uh, yeah, it was a normal upbringing. Okay. Considering the circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> Considering the circumstances, indeed. Uh, so after after growing up uh, here in Chigali, there, there is a time you you manage to get out of Rwanda. Which country did you move to first? Um, actually, um, right after high school, so I got an opportunity. To, we moved abroad with my whole family. Yeah. Um, my target or my final destination was to be England, United Kingdom. Uh, I had a, a few a few stints uh, in, in in Holland, uh, in Switzerland, in Belgium, but very few uh, small few months. Huh? Mm -hmm. Then, but ultimately, uh, I reached uh, my destination where my family lived at that time uh, in England, and that's where I spent uh, the years after my high school. So, yeah. right, the years after high school, that's where I spent. So, after growing up here in Kigali, how was it for you to be in? Yeah, in Europe, let's say in general, like what were the biggest uh, like eye-opening things or challenging things that you came across? It, it's like you know, it's uh, it's like every young person here, everyone wants, dreams of going to the western yes. part of the world. Um, when I left here, I was very excited. Um, you know, just going to Europe, it's shiny, shiny, everything's good. I'm gonna get a job. I'm gonna get a university right away. So you had like a thousand millions of dreams, huh, uh -huh. running in your head. 
Um, but once you get there, obviously the reality hits. Yeah. So the reality will hit you that it's it's normal. Okay, maybe a, a, a much more developed country that you're going to, uh, you may get food or clothes or this much easier than you would here. Yeah. But life is hard. It's uh, it's hard everywhere. What was so, the biggest surprise you, you, you encountered when you were there that you did not expect? Of course, the weather. It's, 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 it's too cold, especially uh, where you're from in, in, in Holland. I have a very bad experience in a, in a small town in, in Hauda, I think. Hauda? Uh, Hauda, yeah. It's crazy cold over there. That's yeah. what I remember. Yeah. But um, the other surprise is, is, is it's different. It's different yeah. from our world, so it's very different. It's advanced. Things are much faster, obviously nicer in a way, some yeah. of it. But also some other bad stuff. So yeah. Yeah. So so would you say that living in Europe or in the UK, you, you know, you were able to kind of like manage, or did you think it was like more tougher than than Kigali? No, no, no. I, I was gonna manage. It wasn't tougher than Kigali. Obviously, for a young person, yeah. you have more opportunities there. Because, uh, for example, youth unemployment is still high uh, in these countries in Africa, whereas in Europe, uh, it's it's a uh, you can start working at, um, at the age of 13, you know, yeah. just doing the paper rounds. Uh, imagine at 13, you're already making money. Yeah. Uh, by the time you're 18, the, the opportunities are uh, not maybe career-wise, but job, yeah. just a job. Yeah. You can always get a job uh, and do something. Yeah. So it's, um, if you're willing to work hard, um, shouldn't be hard, it's not hard. Yeah. Okay, so while living in the UK, <coughs> Uh, that's, I think the first time you went into the world of, how do you call it, hospitality? Yeah, hospitality, yeah. Yeah, so what made you make that first jump into hospitality as a young man? Uh, I never thought, I never dreamed of being in hospitality, just to let you know. Okay. Actually, my, my aspiration at the time, uh, I was going to university there. Uh, university, I was doing a completely different uh, course. Uh, I was doing uh, computer science for business, so I was, I was dreaming of being a, an IT person. Um, and uh, the way I, 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 I met hospitality, uh, I was, initially I was doing, um, you know, factory jobs, factory work, you know, uh, picking, packing, all those things. Uh, that was before I started the university. Then uh, I got, a, I got a, a break, uh, I got accepted into a university in, uh, in the city of Birmingham, and the, city, the, the university was in town. Now, if you are doing factory work, yeah. most of the time it's not easy to do factory work and then go to school at the same time. So, and there was a brand new uh, hotel that, yeah. that opened up in town, and coincidentally, it's a Radisson. Okay. So it's what, I think it was the first Radisson in, in Birmingham. Yeah. They were hiring, and um, wow. Well, one of my family members had already secured a job and he yeah. said, like, why can't you come? Because it's a few steps away from the university. I was like, that's good, actually. I was making less, but I wasn't uh, spending it on transportation. Or yeah. It was less, but good. Because okay. I could just uh, jump out of uh, class and be on a shift at three, yeah. or um, be off work and uh, be in class at three. So it was very easy for me. And that's how I uh, started that. It was mainly for flexibility and ease uh, for me to go to school. That's how so you I got into so the you, hospitality. You were like uh, working and studying at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Which is quite normal actually. In it's in Europe, it's normal, you, you do both. Uh, when you're young, you have to do both. Yeah. Okay, but then for some reason you, 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 you stayed there for quite some time, according to your LinkedIn profile, like at least four years. Um, so you must have either liked it or you were really good at that job. Um, I mean, when I when I did it, I was it was okay for me. Uh, I liked it in a way. Uh, it's a it's a it's a job that allowed me to. Um, I'm normally a, a very hard working person. Yeah. I don't think I'm still as I used to be, <laughs> but I, I believe I'm a hard working person. And and the, the 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 hotel I was working for allowed me to be very flexible. I moved positions. I got promoted in a way. I started at a very uh, actually basic uh, or entry position. Yeah, which was? Uh, it's uh, you wouldn't believe it, but I started as a housekeeper. As a housekeeper. A room attendant. A room attendant is the person who makes the beds. Ah. And that's that's the pretty much you would say it's the uh, it's the entry position at any hospitality, yes, so that's how I started and I moved up 
Uh, I went to the reception. I did the, what they call night audit, uh, which has a little bit of finance in it. And then I went to the bar uh, for food and beverage. I stayed there, so uh, but I, st I stuck around mainly uh, because it was really close to my, uh, my university, so I wasn't going to move out of that establishment. Yeah. But the longer I kept uh, working, the, the more comfortable I got into the job, and uh, I kept working. Yeah. Okay, so you kept working, working hard, and, and, and from that entry job, you were able to finish as a uh, manager, if I believe? Yeah, I was in the bar. I was kind of managing the bar at the time, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then from there on, you moved on to the Hilton. So from there, I moved, actually, I moved countries. So I moved countries. There was a big change in my life, uh, a big patch. So I, circumstances... Uh, made it that I was to move out of the UK and uh, move to the United States. Okay. Uh, so I moved to the United States and... Uh, How old were you then when you moved to the United huh, States? I don't know, 20... what? 26, 7? 26 maybe? Okay, still a young man. Yeah, I was still young, about maybe 27. So I moved to the United States and um, coincidentally the city I moved to, which I didn't really plan to move to that city, to, to begin with, yeah. but it was the only city I had a family, uh, people who could take me in for, you know, yeah. while I get uh, my, uh, my life together. Yeah. Uh, it was a city very busy in hospitality and getting a job was very easy for me as well. So like within a month I had a job. Because you had experience. Because I had experience and it was an international experience that I had. So it wasn't an easy, it wasn't hard for me to get a job in hospitality in the city of Miami, which is yeah. one of the biggest hospitality cities in the world. So I, the next thing I know, again, I'm in a hotel. Yeah. And when I moved, I was planning to do something else. To be uh, honest, I, I wasn't feeling like hotel, because even when I moved to the US, I wanted to focus my studies into um, business IT. Yeah. And that was what I was looking for. So imagine if you want to focus your studies into a field, yeah. obviously that's where you want to get a job you know, uh, in, in that field. But then I ended up again in a, in a hotel, which also allowed me to do both, so study and, and work. Because yeah. hotels are very flexible, uh, very flexible because we work 24 hours, uh, which means you have a lot of shifts, so you can choose a shift that is easy for you to do and to go to school as well. Okay. So after you moved there, you are back into the hospitality again, uh, working at the, at the Hilton or was it the Double Yeah, I, I worked for the Hilton uh, for a number of years. Uh, yeah. Most of the years in the US was with the Hilton um, chain, which is uh, one of the biggest brands in the world. Uh, we don't have a Hilton here yet, but I'm sure we will have one soon. Uh, in America, it's mainly Hilton and Marriott, so it's either one of the two. It has to be a Marriott or a Hilton. Obviously, they have so many brands. It may not be a Hilton, but it may be a Hampton by Hilton, a Homewood Suite. Yeah. So many, the same thing with the Marriott. So it's, um, that's where I landed. I landed that specific at a double tree, double tree by Hilton. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I've never slept at one, but I know I've seen You have it. to sleep in a double tree because they have a very, uh, they have something that is memorable if you go there. Yeah. It's the only hotel where they give you, they have a, a fresh cookie, very nice cookie, I think hazelnut cookie. Mm -hmm. They give you when you check in. So a check in, before they check in, they hand you a nice warm cookie, okay. and that's their trademark signature welcome, uh, you know, sign, I guess. That's interesting. Yeah. Now you have to experience it. Well, I'll do it for the cookie, yes. <laughs> It's a, yeah. And it's a very, very nice cookie, but it packs around 400 calories. Oh my God, <laughs> that's a whole lunch. <laughs> that's a whole lunch. So uh, imagine us walking with those cookies because you, you, like, um, you have like a warmer, something yeah. warming them because you have to serve it warm. warm yeah, yeah. So imagine you're standing and it smells so good. So the whole shift, eight hours, you are standing over something that is, smells good. Yeah. So sometimes you get tempted and you get hungry because you probably skip lunch and you eat like four of them. That's like 1,600 calories. That's, that sounds very <laughs> so American. So no wonder why we, we put on weight. That sounds very American indeed to have some, yeah. <laughs> something so packed with calories. Yeah, no, no, it's very good. It's a very, very good cookie, but bad in terms of, uh, you know. Yeah. So you are now living, let's say, the American dream. You've made it to America, which is a dream for many immigrants, I would say, especially from Africa. You've found a job. You're doing well, you know, you, you have experience. And then, for some reason, you say like, nah, 
I need to go back to Africa. Can you tell us why, how did this thought come to mind and what made you make the decision? So, um, well, I wouldn't say I was living the American dream. Trust me, the American dream sometimes takes longer to achieve, but I was happy. I was happy. I can't complain. Yeah. Uh, I, I enjoyed my life, my, uh, my life in America. Yeah. Um, I ended up being an American citizen. So I, I have that country as my second home. So yeah. life wasn't easy, but it was, uh, I was going to school, I was doing my work, so it was fine. Um, I did hospitality there as well for a number of years, and I kept moving up, up the ranks. Uh, got, got promoted a few, you know, many, many times. Um, and uh, one day, I don't even think I have given it a thought, really. So I never thought of coming back. I never closed the door to coming back. Yeah. But I never thought I would come back maybe into hospitality. I, I, I thought I was going to come back later, in my later years, like um, everyone, most people do. Mm -hmm. But not really uh, in my, let's say, my, young, my adult, um, uh, early adulthood uh, years. So, but I made a decision, surprisingly, I think I made that decision within a month. Really? So I saw a post, a job post here in Kigali of something that I knew I could do, mm -hmm. that I was doing. Um, I think it was on Facebook. I saw it on Facebook. I'm yeah. a very uh, active social media person. Yeah. I saw it, I was like, hmm, that position. I checked the chain, it was one of, uh, it's a brand, it was a, a French brand that, that was to open a hotel here in Kigali. And I saw the position, I was like, okay, now that's interesting. I hit, I hit back, I yeah. said, uh, this position, I'm interested. I said who I am, I do this, I'm here. Yeah. Within probably 30 minutes, uh, a Frenchman wrote back. So wrote back, he's like, okay, can, can we have a chat? I was like, yeah, call me. Yeah. He calls me, we talked. He's can you do this? I was like, come on, I do this every day. So, oh. And he's like, how fast, can, how, how soon can you be in Kigali? <laughs> I'm like, what's the salary? He tells me the salary and, Okay, he's like, how fast can you be here? I'm like, uh, let me think about it. He's like, no, I need you on the 1st of June. <laughs> and that was like, I think, end of April. Mm -hmm. So end of April, he says, I need you on the 1st of June. Okay. <laughs> I talked to my wife, uh, we talked to a few people uh, just to make sure they were making the right decision. Yeah. And my wife is like, why not? And I, everybody I was telling, I was talking to is like, why not? So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, why not? So I packed my bag within a month. I was out of the US. Wow. This is very, this is what I, I find didn't so even have time to sell my stuff, to be honest. This is what I find so interesting about your story. You see, for most people, they, when, once they are out of Africa, they don't think about going back to Africa, specifically not for a job. They are looking for a business, maybe, or a foundation. But you just found a job online, you applied, and someone called you, and it was attractive enough. So basically, the salary was competitive to what you were making. Yeah, definitely was there. competitive, yes. Yeah. So that's good to hear and, that. And it was competitive and career-wise, I was moving up. Yeah. I looked at the brand, the, the employer, the yeah. brand, and the position and the salary, the whole package. Because yeah. in the package, you have the tangible and the intangibles. Yes. The tangible is the money you get, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The intangible is the employer, the brand, the name, the size. So uh, I looked at those, I was like, this is uh, probably better than what I'm making here. Yeah. And, and, and for me, um, I'm a very, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I follow economy, um, economy news a lot, yeah. uh, the, the, the world economic uh, dynamics. Um, I like to go where opportunities are and I study those. So, for example, I, have, I can live legally uh, in, in America because I'm a citizen there. I can live in Europe because my wife is a citizen there. I can live in Africa because I was born in Africa. So I have at least three continents I can yeah. live and work. Exactly. So those three opportunities, I rank them economically and the way they are heading. Mm -hmm. So when I rank them, Europe is out of the equation for me. So I don't really see myself, I could, I'm not saying no, yeah. but the opportunities in Europe, are, it's, it's saturated, I can Saturate, say. Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. saturated. Uh, the population, it, so it's, it's not easy to move up the ranks uh, in your life, your professional life in Europe, or even the, the, you look at the, um, the, the economic growth of countries in Europe. It's very, most of the time it's very small. Yes. Now, if you look at Africa, 
the growth in Africa if a country has security, you have seven percent, eight percent, sometimes double digit in some countries in Africa. So that, those are the things that I look at. So where are the opportunities? The opportunities either business or professional. That's what I look. So I, I always ranked Africa number one. For some reason, I believe in Africa more than I believe in Europe or America. America can come second because it also has opportunities. It's a big land. So many things happening. But for me, Africa comes number one. Africa's number one. And, and, and is there a reason why you specifically then chose or Rwanda or was just the opportunity that manifested Yeah, an opportunity opened right? up in Rwanda. It's my, of course, home is always home. So you can't really deny the fact. Yeah. You rather do good and, you know, in, in your home, in, in your motherland. Yes. So Rwanda is number one on my heart. So I came here, uh, an opportunity opened up, but it doesn't mean that if an opportunity, an opportunity opens up in, in, in South Sudan or in, in in any other African country, I will definitely take it because I know Africa in general, it's, uh, it's where the opportunities will be in the next 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. That's where things will be happening. If we can keep it steady in terms of security and leadership, it will be a, it's a, it's a very interesting continent. Well, I can't agree with you more because also that's also maybe one of the main reasons I guess I moved also to Rwanda is because of the opportunities are kind of unheard of. To, to get these same opportunities in Europe, you know, as where I came from. Now, of course, looking back at it, it seems like you made the, the right choice. You moved here, you got a, a, a better opportunity, and this opportunity made you grow into a bigger and better position, and to the big dream position of yours where you are a GM at your privileged, pre previous hotel, the Onomo Hotel. Um, so actually, tell us, what is it that a, a GM does, actually? Well, a GM general it, manager. It's a general manager. So, a general manager of a, of a hotel, you pretty much oversee everything that is happening in the hotel. Uh -huh. uh, you have, you know, you have lieutenants, if I may say, people yes. who are working under you in departments. So, you pretty much coordinate and and then lead. So, you have to be a leader uh, of yeah. everyone in the hotel, uh, so that they can follow a good example. And um, the hotel is your responsibility. So, you're like. Uh, a guard of this, of this, a guardian of this, uh, yeah. of the hotel, the premises, the employees, and the guests, the yeah. people coming. So everything is under your guardianship. You have to make sure that everything is running smoothly as it was planned to run. Yeah, that's your job. As it was planned to run, that's very important. Uh, yes, because there is a plan of yes. how something has to run. Yeah. So you have to make sure that you're a guardian. So you have to make sure that plan is yeah. followed and yeah. things are supposed to run the way. They were designed to run, but in essence, you you ha do you have the flexibility to do it like the way you want it to achieve that result, or is there also a plan to execute that plan? No, there is a plan. There is always a plan for, especially for these big brands, uh, yeah. Radisson or Nomo. There is always a strategic plan yeah. that comes from up top, uh, CEO, uh, you know, uh, board of directors. So it comes from very fast. So, but that's a very broad plan. So there is a plan. Now, how you execute it, they give you mechanism of how to execute it. But uh, there, is, there is flexibility, there is creativity that has to come from you of how to run it. So they may say, okay, so you have, in a hotel, you have basically two main revenue streams. Yeah. So you have rooms and you have what is called food and beverage. So those are the main men. So they will tell you rooms are running, are supposed to run like this, but you have to be the one to know the market. Uh, your competitors, how to compete with them, uh, the strategies you put in place in most yeah. cases come from you, not from up top. Uh, yeah, exactly. So you are the ones really uh, executing the broad plan yes. by using your skills on a very uh, local level mm -hmm. to make sure that the plan is, 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 uh, is successful. Successful. Okay, that's very interesting. So how uh, now that you've run the GM position, you know, at Onomo, now you are at a big um, brand, I'm, I'm, I'm saying. What are your first responsibilities that you have for this um, uh, yeah, new position? Well, the um, first month is pretty much, uh, you, you, are, you are basically like you're at school. Yeah. So you are learning. Huh? It's a very, uh, it's a month where you have to learn as much as possible. Yeah. You learn the team you're going to work with. Uh, you learn the premises, the, 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 the building, 
uh, the facilities, how things are working, how they are operating. Uh, you learn their market. Uh, I mean, they are, let's say, what is called a comp set, for example, competitive set. So who are you actually competing with? Who are you with? And how do you see yourself in that market? So you are learning, and you also you're learning the, the policies and procedures and of the group, because you are coming to a group that has a, a set uh, you know, strategic plan of doing things, and you have to learn that strategy. So you have to know everything and observe. So you're learning, you're observing. Um, if you could find a few things you can fix quickly, you can do that. But you normally have to give yourself time to first learn, learn, yeah. learn. Yeah. All right. So now let's talk about more of, of uh, your, your personal life. Because you said you, you, have, you have your wife with whom you moved here to, to Rwanda with. Where did you meet your wife and how old were you then? Uh, I, I, I'm, well, I met my now wife uh, in England, in the UK. Okay. We used to live in the same region. So yeah, And she's also Rwandan. Yeah, she's Rwandese as well. So, and uh, we met, uh, oof, I don't know, I was about 20, maybe 26, I think. I was 26 at the time, yeah. so we met, we dated, and uh, you know, yeah. things, one thing leading to another, yeah. and here we are with two kids. <laughs> so, when you, because that's also the age you said you moved to the United States, yeah. did she move with you? No, 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 initially we, she didn't move with me, so yeah. I moved alone. Uh, was it hard? It was hard, of course. Yeah. Uh, long, long, long distance relationships are never easy, yeah. but if you have a plan and uh, you are committed, I guess it's, uh, it yeah. can work, it can work. But you just have to make sure that it's not too long. Huh? When yeah. it's too long, I think it fades away. How long were you like total the, the long distance? Uh, around, I think, uh, probably, uh, let's see, around, actually, maybe six years. Uh, six so years. Five, I think five, yeah. yeah. It's still a very long time, though. I it's a very long time, like but it's, uh, it's not as, it, it's, it was okay, because, uh, you know, this, um, uh, moving between Europe and, and America, it's yeah. it's easy. So so you should come to visit. Yeah. You, you so visit. flights are very constant, so it's yeah. easy. You just find the right time to fly if it's yeah. cheap, and then you fly. So okay. So and then like how when did you guys decide to okay when did you guys did you decide to pop the question and ask her to marry? I actually probably popped the question before I moved to the US. Ah, you wanted to secure the bag. To, 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 lock, to lock the deal in, you know, uh, how you pay a deposit and then you can come and pay the rest back. Uh, so I yeah. paid my deposit and then so I you went. So your deposit there, like here, put this on. <laughs> and then I'm out. Yeah? Oh, okay. yeah. But it helps. I think it's a, it's a, it's a way for you to be yeah. kept committed. Yeah. So I guess it makes sense if you had like a five-year uh, long-distance relationship and you're already like engaged in a way. That's, yeah. And then you did your civil wedding in, in the United States. How was it? Because uh, I saw the pictures on Facebook. It would look very nice on the Florida beach. And, uh, yeah, it was yeah. very colorful. Yeah. Not expensive, but colorful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, which wedding is not? Eh? But... No, no, that one wasn't that expensive, actually. Weddings yeah. in, uh, in, in the West are not expensive. Yeah. You can just have a good wedding for, for three, four thousand and that's it. Okay. But that here is just a, a cost for, for a wedding venue. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So after you had that wedding, um, you said, and then you, from the United States, you moved back straight to Rwanda, or did she first move to no, the No, she moved to the, to the, to the United States, uh, yeah. and unfortunately, her, her stay wasn't that long. Really? It was, I think, one year, maybe, yeah. uh, one year and a few months, which we were actually starting to, to, to plan for our life there, what are we going to do. Yeah. Uh, I actually think uh, I, 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 I got the Facebook job announcement when she was preparing to pass her pharmacy board exam in the US. So she was to pass it the next morning. Me, I was busy, uh, just I couldn't sleep, I think. Uh, one night I was checking on Facebook and the next thing I know, something popped up. So she's going to pass. That means she, we want to establish ourselves in a country in, and Facebook job post changed everything. So, <laughs> which she, she actually passed it. She passed the exam. Yeah. She did pass and it's not an easy exam to pass. So she, that means she's still eligible to get a job or start a business in the United States as well? She, yeah, because normally you can't be a pharmacist anyway, I think in the world, you have to pass some kind of a board exams. Yeah. The toughest ones, I believe, they're in the US. Yeah. Okay, so then you move together then to here in Rwanda to, to start your family basically here, right? 
Yes. So, uh, yeah, we moved here and she's still working in the medical field. Um, yes. Ultimately, maybe uh, as a pharmacist uh, yeah. as well. Pretty soon, I believe. And uh, I kept working in what I know how yeah. to do best. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, good. So, and then you say you already have two daughters, eh? You know, you are, you know, you are in front of me in life because I don't have any children yet. What, what changed in your life when your first child was born? <laughs> Yeah, when you have a when you have a child, is a is life changing. Yeah. It's very life changing because now uh, most of the things that you think, uh, uh, for example, if I was to go back uh, in those years when I made a decision to move to Rwanda, yeah. how fast it was easy for me to just make a decision within one month I'm out yeah. of one country, my whole life is like moved from one place to another. That's easy when you don't have kids. Yeah. But once you have kids. Not so much, because you have to think about so many, many other things, huh? Because yeah. you don't want to impact your kids just because you want to follow your dreams or career. Yeah. Now you have other little, little souls that yeah. you're taking care of, and you have to also know their needs and their wants. Yeah. So now, when you ha when you have a kid, that's when you realize, because you have to really be, um, you think for yourself, but you also think for them. Every decision you make in life is for you, mm -hmm. the wife, and them. So it's now three people, yeah. so it's, it's not easy. Okay, so how is then, because now you are actually living the family life here in Chigali, how is, how is the family life here in Chigali like? Well, it's, uh, it's nice if you are, of course it depends on how, of the kind of person you are, so yeah, that, yeah, that also yeah. you have to, uh, to factor that in. But it's nice, um, it's a very, uh, uh, you have, we have good schools because that's very, yeah. Crucial when you have uh, kids, you have to make sure they get the, be the better education than, than what you had when you were growing up. So yes. there are so many schools, good schools, um, yeah. um, activities to do. Things are starting to pop up. Uh, so do you, do, you, do you think you would have? Uh, do you think you would have had a, a better family life in America or Europe, or do you think Rwanda is the? Like, where do you think the better family life would have been? I think um, personally, the way I see it. I, I, and I'm, 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 I'm blessed that uh, I'm, I'm living a life, I think, raising a kid here, a, 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 let's say a child. Raising a child in, in, in Rwanda, uh, as opposed to raising a child in, in America, yeah. it's easy to raise a child in Rwanda because you have help. So you can have help, you have flexibility, you can also do something for yourself. Um, but in America, uh, it's tough. Because it's only you, the wife, and the kids. That's all. That's, That's all cool. you have in your life. There is no one helping you. Uh, there is no house help. There is nothing. And that takes away, um, you know, some time as well. Because you need the social life. You need enjoyment as an adult. Yeah. Uh, that you don't have it in America. That's why you see most of the people who come here for vacation, they go crazy. Like, the parties and the, yeah. the social life opens up. Because there, when you have kids, it's not easy. It's not as easy, especially life is very busy. They work so hard. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you go to school. Yeah. So imagine if you're doing those three and you also have to make the rounds for the kids. You take them to the school, you bring them to go play soccer or mm -hmm. basketball. Yeah. So it's much, much uh, easier here for me. Yeah. Uh, not to mean that you cannot do it there because I, yeah. I know friends, I know yeah. people, I know people who have done it and they are succeeding. Yeah. It's possible to do it. It's, you know, yeah. they do it, but it's, uh, I think it's more comfortable here than there. Mm. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Good to know, I guess, for aspiring parents, like uh, some people I know. It's... Definitely stick around. Yeah. Trust me, stick around. On yeah. that end, it's, uh, it's easier. Yeah. Uh, than, than it's, it's, it's a little bit stressful raising uh, uh, kids in, in, in America or in Europe. Yeah. All right, so we're coming to the end of this uh, talk, I would say. Uh, so now being through everything that you've kind of like, you know, been through, like what's one interesting like upside or knowledge you think you've gained from your move from America to Rwanda that you did not know before you moved? I mean, it's, um, uh, what I learned is that uh, maybe I had that, that vision because some, sometimes when people have visions, it's easy when they, they find things out. Yes. They're like, yeah, I, I kind of knew this. Um, I, I, Africa. So I, I believe in Africa. Um, now I believe in it more than I, when I see it, especially when you're in Rwanda. That's when you can vividly see 
uh, what Africa can become uh, or what Africa will become. Yeah. So you can really see it. Now, if you're in America, not so much because you are just seeing from very far. You can have a glimpse, a glimpse of what Africa is going to be. But once you work in Rwanda, you, you get to, you know, to, to be part of the working society uh, in, in, in Rwanda or in Africa, because I work with a lot of Africans. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting where Africa is heading. Uh, that's one thing I discovered. Yeah. yeah. All right. And finally, what is one big tip you have for someone like you who is maybe also living abroad, contemplating to make this big move to Africa, maybe not Rwanda, but any other African country, but they are still worried and, and you know, about life, security, opportunities. Uh, basically, they have a lot of hurdles. What advice would you give them if, if uh, you were in their shoes? I mean, um, it's not a one-size-fits-all one kind of solution, no. For me, um, I don't really try to motivate people or go around saying, come back home, come back to Africa. No, no, no. What works for you may not be what is going to work for me. That's number one. Number two, you have to believe in it. You have to have some kind of a vision, belief. Um, you can't just move because you saw Theo or you saw Emil have moved yeah. and you think it's going to happen like that. No, no, you have to have a plan. Do I, do I actually see myself there? Uh, what I do? Those things. It's so many things I have to really uh, consider. Yeah. Uh, you just can't do it because others are doing it. You have to do it for yourself. You have to believe in it and you have to feel comfortable uh, doing it. Is it possible? Yes, of course it's possible to move back and do something. You can do business, you can do, uh, you can come into the professional, you know, uh, circles uh, like we do. And it's just that you have to do your due diligence. You have to do your due diligence. You can't just be working for NASA and then think you are coming to Rwanda and do something. You could be, you could, yeah. but you're not going to have another NASA here. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, it may be another industry, or it may be to another scale, or maybe uh, entrepreneurship, uh, you start your own thing. So it's just that you have to do your due diligence and, and feel comfortable that it's going to work. But it's possible, there are opportunities in Africa. Um, a lot more opportunities, I believe. Uh, if I look at um, other continents, I think for me, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but the way I see it and I believe it, Africa is where opportunities are, and that's where the opportunities are going to grow in the next uh, 20, 40 years. They are going to grow at a much faster rate than, than in other countries. For the young ones out there, you know, anyone who see um, someone, for, for, for me, my story is a, a man who started at a room attendant in a Radisson Hotel in England, and now is a GM at a Radisson branded hotel. Um, it doesn't come like this, like in one night. It takes years of consistency, uh, hard work. Trust me, there are, there are days or nights that I wanted to quit what I was doing because it's not easy. It's never easy, uh, but it's just consistent and mainly doing what you do the best you can. If you're doing something just averagely, just doing a job so that you're going to collect a paycheck, yeah. you will be average. You will stay average, that's for sure. But if you do, even if you are cleaning and you are cleaning the best you can be at cleaning, you're not gonna be average at cleaning or average in life. So you will move up. So you'll be a cleaner today, tomorrow you'll be a supervisor cleaner and you can be, become a CEO or, or open your company, cleaning company. But if you are cleaning averagely, as an average, just come to collect the check, you are just cleaning and you go home, that's all you're gonna be. That's all you're ever gonna be. So I, I guess maybe, I don't know if you've heard, there's this trend called the quiet quitting trend. I don't know if you've heard of it. No. No? It's like the opposite of what you're saying. It's what people are saying, you just go to your job and just do the bare minimum and then clock out. So you don't agree with that? No, I don't agree with it. Okay, you can do it, but you have to understand that the bare minimum yeah. for the check is gonna be that for, for long. Yeah. That's all. That's uh, all. So there will be no growth? There's, there will be no growth because you are bare minimum. You yeah. are you are average. No one is going to promote you. No one is going to want you to go. It's going to just keep you there because yeah. you are coming in, you're clocking in, you're working, you go home. That's it. So it's bare minimum for bare check, uh, bare minimum check and uh, average. But if 
normally for me, I believe that if you want to move, yeah. if you want to grow, you have to do more for less pay you are getting, mm -hmm. so that you can get more pay for less work you will be doing in the future. Mm. More now for less pay, mm -hmm. that will take you for more pay for less work. Yes. Not to say that I'm doing less work, <laughs> but the pay grows. Yeah. But probably, you know, for example, if, if in the next, let's say, 10 years I become a CEO. So CEOs earn millions. Yeah. Now, they are doing a lot of work, that's for sure. So many things, strategic thinking, planning, but you look up the pay and the workload is probably, even on the physical level, is not as, 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 uh, as busy as, you know, yeah. as a room attendant in a way. Yeah, exactly. uh, so, but, you know, you have to work much harder right now for the pay you are getting, yeah. so that in the future you can earn more for the work you'll be doing. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. And I guess you are the embodiment of that, of starting from the bottom yes. and working and putting in that work. And it results in you actually becoming like, yeah, basically the boss of the chain or location where you are, where you, and where, like, I don't know, 13 years ago, maybe? I don't know. Where no, it's around, uh, it's almost 20. It's around almost 18 20. years ago. 18, yeah, you see? 18. So it's been 18 years in the making. Uh, yep. Um, but it has to be consistent. So to stay in, 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 a, in a field for 18 years, yeah. it's not easy. Trust me, I've, I've worked with people who quit many, many times. Some quit on the spot. They're like, you know what? Screw yeah. this, I'm out, I quit. So mm -hmm. those, those circumstances, they happen a lot mm -hmm. in, in that 18 years. So yeah. I've, I've been on the verge of quitting so many times as well in my life. It's just that maybe I think about it, I go home, on my way home, I drink a beer, chill, <laughs> cool down. Yeah. The next morning, I come back to do it again, better. Better. Ah. better. So, but if you quit, you don't know what you're missing. Or yeah. maybe you don't know why you, you're gaining, because it's possible you can quit something bad for you and yeah. get into something better for you. So I guess then, so I guess maybe the biggest step would be, what is the biggest step you have for people who want to grow? Let's say they have a position, but they want to become like a GM of that position. That they you have, have to have a dream. So you have to dream. I'm a big dreamer. So I dream about every little thing in my life. Yeah. Even the car I'm going to drive in the next 10 years, I'm dreaming about it right now. Okay. So I'm a big dreamer and if you are in a hospital, you have to look at that position and say, I want to be that. I want to be it now. Once you've established that, that's the first step of, of getting there. Now, it's, it's a matter of working hard, that's all. Mm -hmm. Working hard doesn't mean that working hard, hard. No, working yeah. hard efficiently, effectively, you know, being an asset to whoever is employing you. Because once you're an asset for them, they will yeah. keep promoting you. They can't promote a liability, so they only promote, yeah. they only promote they assets. Only promote assets yeah. yeah, so become an asset. Yeah, you have to yeah. become an asset to someone who is hiring you. An asset so that when you say, you, for example, when you resign, that person can see the loss. So they can say, oh, I'm losing. Because sometimes people resign and they're like, oof, <laughs> good riddance. Ah, that's interesting, that's a very interesting so, insight. So you have to make sure you are an asset somewhere you are working, because an asset is something that has value, yeah. The value that increases, mm -hmm. a liability is something that is taking out your, yeah. your money. So you have to make sure that you're an asset because people promote assets. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Emil. This was very insightful, especially for someone who's been 18 years in the field. I'm sure many people are going to uh, uh, read and, and learn a lot from this. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's good. I, I love sharing. Uh, yeah. If it helps someone too, yeah. even, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm glad. I'm not saying I'm also there because I still need the inspiration as well. So I, I, I love reading other people. Trust me, yeah. I, will, I will probably follow an, a CEO interview tomorrow, something yeah. something like that. Because I also want, I, I'm, I'm still growing. Still, still growing. growing. Still, still dreaming. I'm still growing. I'm still dreaming. Yeah. Big. So yeah. but if someone is, is, is very, uh, very early stages of dreaming and yeah. growing, if I can be an inspiration, yeah. very, very nice. Yes. Nothing better than that. Thank you very much. Thank you as well.